Well, hello there, laddie. Uh, this week, we have the awesome Shoney Mc... <laughs> Neil Shoney McLean. Um, he has a better Scottish accent than I do, uh, quite frankly, and you'll find that out as soon as on there. He also has a glorious beard, which I'm never going to be able to imitate. Most importantly, though, he knows about something which I've never understood. Every, ever since we started the business and ever since I've been kind of involved in marketing, it's always been about content. It's always been about organic and pushing that way. Paid hasn't been something that we really lean into. And when we have, we've got and found experts. Neil Shoney McLean is one of those experts, right? Shoney just knows his business. So it is, you can hear me during this show just lose my mind as I learn more and more stuff. And like, oh, that's why I clicked on that thing. And you can actually hear me understand that I have been recently very much a victim uh, of <laughs> a paid ad and received a great service from it as well. So if you're interested in paid, you want to know how to take your business and get it out to those people you're not speaking to organically, this is the show for you. Check out Shoney. He's the man, the wonderful, the awesome Mr. Neil Shoney McLean. And we are live. Welcome to another episode of The Jaily Show. Each week we sit down with different people across all of the world and we talk about what's happening with them, what's happening in business and what's happening. Uh, this week we have the epic, the wonderful, the legendary Mr. Neil Shoney McLean. How are you, sir? I'm very well, Jay. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. As you can tell, hyped as always, we had the slightest modicum of sun peak through the uh, February weather yesterday. Beautiful <laughs> every, stuff. Uh, th that's it. I'm, I, I'm, I'm supercharged by that for a week, so that's been good. Brilliant. Um, so look, for those out, out there who haven't found you yet, um, tell, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, I, I'm an online marketing success coach, uh, but I didn't start in the marketing space. I didn't start at university studying marketing or any of that traditional stuff. Uh, I was the, the business owner long Sorry, before. I didn't understand. Brilliant. Yeah. Nice. Go, go, Google Play. <laughs> um, <laughs> She said she, said she she doesn't understand, so I don't know about your listeners. Um, <laughs> so you, your pitch is so complex that Google doesn't understand, but yeah, I was getting it. So it, Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I, I was the business owner long before I was the consultant, and I was the consultant long before I was the coach. So I started a, a large exhibition company uh, with one of my best mates, and we grew that to thousands of people coming to our show every single year. I sold that about five years down the line. And throughout that process, started making some connections and talking about my love for paid advertising and how beautiful it is. And traditionally in that space, you tend to find that the majority of people are actually doing, you know, radio ads, TV yeah. ads, yeah. Uh, magazines, bus stops. yeah, bus stops and buses and all that stuff, right? Which is absolutely fine. And anything that brings an ROI, I, I like, so I'm not hating on it at all. But it's not what I knew. And I didn't have the the finances to go and test that stuff out because it's like throw down 10k minimum <laughs> to to test something out so my my way of getting going with this and selling tickets and selling exhibition stands was to learn organic very quickly and then get into paid ads within about six months of running this okay. company uh and through the word of mouth people found out that that was the case and somebody said can you run a facebook ad campaign for our new gym that's opening and so, you thought, well, you, I've had success doing what I can do. I can plug in a different topic in the top. Well, honestly, I was petrified, right? <laughs> well, honestly, I was fine. I was fine risking my own money, but risking somebody else's money freaked me out. But my wife is actually on the couch right now, and I had just started dating her at the time. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if she likes it when I tell this story. But, were, you uh, were, you, were you trying to impress her by spending someone else's big budget? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Uh, but she, she was upset one night, right? And I thought I had done something wrong. And it turned out it was because she hadn't seen her family in like eight months or, or something at that point. And uh, Christmas was about three months away. And I was like, I would love to like surprise her with flights to New York to go and see her family. And at the time, we were halfway through that five-year period of running that, that company. Mm. We weren't even taking really wages. We were taking like living expenses. So there was sure. no... Yeah. no uh, surplus budget by any means so what i did was went online found out the price of flights uh, for two people anything that we were going to need in terms of uh, expenses yeah. and spending money and stuff 
and I priced up the job at that price <laughs> to, to run this launch campaign. Uh, and then I was like, I need to throw myself into it now because I'm getting them to pay up front for it. So I uh, went in, <laughs> ended up spending £4,000 of their money on ads. Uh, we brought in £2,297,866 of membership sales before the doors opened. Wow. Um, and that just created a word of mouth business. And as you can imagine, even though I was doing paid ads for people. I didn't need to run ads for the next like, five years myself. <laughs> no, 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 no. All of a sudden you're like, yeah, word of mouth kind of great. <laughs> you shouldn't <laughs> use word. <laughs> Amazing. So catch up there for us. I feel like the feed might be catching up any second now. I've got you. Nice. Nice, good old, good old live. Um, so, look, how do you get past the barriers then? How do you get past the barriers of spending someone else's cash? Um, when did you when did you start to get confidence with that and, uh, and knowing that you'd be able to give people success? Pretty much the same as everything that I knew was going to bring me more success in business. It was always something that freaked me out. Like I knew that as soon as <laughs> I went into coaching, if I wanted to be a really successful online marketing success coach, I actually needed to be able to speak on camera and I needed to put my face out there and I needed to get on stages and you know sure. all all of those things just freaked me out like I hated speaking to camera the very first time I put a camera in front of me it was it was for a planned 30 se second video I honestly yeah. was nearly in tears after about four hours because I was like, <laughs> like messing everything up I, like freaking out like almost punching walls uh, and it was the same thing with uh, with speaking on stages and, you know, what I've learned right from the very start. And it was the same with the exhibition business. And it was the same with taking on that first client. If it freaks you out, then all you need to do is put yourself in a position where you can't pull back out from it. So I created a course so that I had to be on camera. There was a countdown until that course was was going to be launched. No I was going to film it. Yeah, exactly. I reached out to people who had stages and uh, I, uh, I asked if I could speak on their stages. I also uh, started running uh, live events where we would create people's Facebook ads in the room mm -hmm. because once tickets are sold, I can't pull back out of it. And the thing is, is that now I love, I love speaking on camera. It's, you know, it's actually one of the things I really enjoy doing. And I literally about two days ago booked my biggest ever speaking gig um which i'm absolutely buzzing about is a, a show uh uh event that i actually used to attend for the last like four years oh that's cool uh, in, in the crowd and now i'm getting to speak on the stage oh, and that's really cool their their previous headliners like gary vaynerchuk grant cardone marie forleo and like all of those those big names who i went down to see originally um and now i get to be one of the speakers at it this year so it, it's one of those things it, if it freaks you out put something in place where mm. it would be more painful and more embarrassing if you pulled out from it. So you have to get it done. There's no excuses. <laughs> I, I can think back and remember jobs like that. When I'd got myself in the room, I'd managed to get the job and a month in, I was like, I don't know how to do this. I can't do this. Um, and then being like, but it'll be so embarrassing to have to tell people after all this talk of like, you got the new job and like, it'd be so embarrassing to have to go to the parties and be <laughs> like, yeah, I didn't work out real hard, real hard. So, I've, you know, I just kind of put my head down and had to succeed at it um, just from sheer fear. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's all you can do. <laughs> so... I think paid's really interesting, or, or the paid element of it, as you said. It's not not, not everything you do, but um, with a focus on, because we've done a ton of work over the years focusing on organic to push that out. And a lot of that, I think, has been at times for fear of what you were saying, of spending you know good money after bad on uh, something that we're not always trained at. And things like uh, doing a training uh, uh, you know, on something is great, and then I sit there two weeks later and try to go through <laughs> said said training and all of a sudden i'm you know i'm sat there being like well do i put a 10 pound here or do i put a 100 pound here or is it a thousand here and then later on and all of a sudden i've spent a year's budget in five days and i think that's i think that's the worry that a lot of people have is that is that i could do this badly um so where do you see people going wrong 
when they're originally first sort of kind of setting things up how can how can people miss some of those first missteps if they're trying to do it themselves well there is a couple of key things that will just make life so much easier for you massively lower the risk and massively amplify the the chances of success with your facebook ads uh the first thing is <laughs> the first thing is that you should actually start with quite a low budget okay. you know a lot of people say you know it's pay to play you have to be willing to spend a lot of money and you need to do this that the other i even joined uh it wasn't actually a facebook ad course but it was a paid advertising course for another platform um about two years ago now or something like that and when they were saying about setting up your your campaigns mm. you might know and other people might not know but it, within a, a campaign for a Facebook ad or anything else, you have like one campaign, but then you have ad sets as well, which is almost like your audiences, but you split them up a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and you usually set a budget per audience. And they were doing it at, for this, this is for self-starters, £100 mm -hmm. per day per audience. And I was like, man, that's going to be like 500 bucks per day, which, <laughs> you know, if, if you're quite seasoned with, with paid advertising, you go, that right. great. Yeah, exactly. That just means that there should be excellent returns on the other side of it, right? Brilliant. Yeah. But man, that is some amount of risk, especially if you aren't going into this with money to burn, right? Been there, done it. Clicked the wrong button on LinkedIn once, spent a whole ton of money, got, got absolutely mauled out by my business partner. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so for the most part with, with paid ads, you, you want to start at sort of like 10 bucks per day. And if you are a company that already has deeper pockets and bigger spending, you tend to want to go to about 50 pounds per day for your, your testing budgets as your overall campaign budget, mm -hmm. because it's very quickly going to give you indications of which audiences perform better than other ones, which ads perform better than others, ads being the thing that people are actually seeing or the images that people are seeing or whatever it may be. And one of the easiest ways for you to massively increase the, the level of success that you'll have with your Facebook ads is by doing exactly that, testing broadly, okay. you know? So hence, hence using that lower budget. So you've got more ammunition to try in a myriad of different ways. Yeah, spot on. So you're going to spend a little bit of budget. It's going to get spread throughout the campaign and Facebook itself is actually going to see which audiences start to perform well and they'll start right. pushing the budget there and which, uh, which images are performing better than other images, which videos are performing better than other videos and so on and so okay. forth. And we can have a little bit of a level of control over that, but Facebook have got really good at finding you the results that you want. The thing sure. that they don't want, which ironically, they, they know they don't want it. They say they don't want it, but for anybody that's graduated from the boost button and gone to ads manager and created a Facebook ad, <laughs> what, what you end up with after you've gone through their seven step process of creating an ad, you've gone from create that ad button right through to publish is what I call a one, one, one campaign. Right. So you've got one campaign yeah. going to one audience sure, and there's one advert. Okay? Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Being right. There. So you have to hope that first of all, at the campaign level, you've chosen the right setting. So it's optimized, right? Then you have to hope. Sure, that, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Then you have to hope that you've chosen the right audience, which by the way, we don't always know what the best audience is going to be. Right. So it's, it's, it's no, like, and, yeah. and that's not a paid thing. That's business thing. If I knew exactly who my audience were, I'd sell more <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. you know, and if I knew who they were, where they were immediately, I'd, I'd get in front of them. Okay. I just so do, I just do cold email. <laughs> exactly. Hi, that's how you it. doing? I, I know you, I know you miss me, Shoni. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we haven't even met and I'm like, I'm okay, you've already missed. Okay. So, um, yeah, your audience, although it seems very, <laughs> it seems like, oh, of course you know who you are. You're a paid ad. What, what else are you going for? But that's going to be tweaked and, there's going to be nuances within it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So you've got your one campaign, you've got one audience, and then you've got one advert that's in front of them. So you have to hope that the copy's right. You have to hope that the image is right. You have to hope that the headline's right. You have to hope that the button text is right. You have to hope that the whole shebang is just perfect. Right. And what I say to people that are, you know, just coming into ads for the first time, bearing in mind I've ran ads for about seven or eight years now. Sure. It, it's, if I was running ads like they were, I would have about a 50% chance of success as somebody that's done it for a very long period of time, spent a lot of money on ads for people and also now coached hundreds of people to run their own ads as well. Right. I, I would still have a pretty decent failure rate 
Uh, and, but, to say, and, and a 50 percent chance is, isn't is, that's not great metrics in your business right no it, it's a 50 50 chance even if you've done pretty well with everything <laughs> you know <laughs> you, you've managed to upskill yourself to, to 50 is it okay exactly. sure and bear um, in mind that to get to that stage right mm-hmm. so to have that one 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 campaign it's probably taking you a good like half an hour 45 minutes to get to that stage now if you just use the duplicate button the beautiful duplicate button, the best button on Facebook ads and duplicate the audiences and then duplicate some of the ads and just change one thing at a time. Right. Then you can very quickly have a campaign that I call a 155 campaign, which is one campaign, but there's five different audiences for Facebook to choose from. And then for each audience, they've got five ads for Facebook to choose from as well which gives Facebook 25 chances instead of one chance to go and get you the result. And you haven't had to be an expert and come come up with, you know, uh, 25 completely brand new variations. You've had five variations of the ad that could be nothing more than a different image each time, you know? So yes, you, you can keep it quite simple, but this is the kicker. So, so many times, even now, I'm like, man, that video is just going to absolutely kill it. I mean, like, that's going to be the one, or that image is going to be the thing, or that audience is definitely going to be the one that converts. 100%. A seven then, years experience, got to well, be. Honestly, it's the weirdest thing. I've, I've got so many people now who like sell fitness products who are just winning by targeting people interested in Tony Robbins. Honestly, I, I, go and, everybody here, go and try it, right? Tar, <laughs> targeting Tony Robbins' audience for some reason, it must be because they're people that, you know, want to progress and they're willing to pay to do it or something. But pretty much if you sell expert coaching, consulting, courses or whatever it may be, it doesn't really matter what you sell. You target Tony Robbins' audience and you'll get pretty good conversions. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. God bless you, Mr. Robbins. <laughs> Honestly. So it sounds like in there, and again, I, I know some of this, it's never been something that I've been personally involved. I've looked over the shoulder of the team when they're, they're doing it. But it sounds like you're um, opening the door to talk about sort of A-B testing and having one thing. So for, a, for anyone who doesn't know what, what on earth I'm talking about, and I'm one of them, um, so I, you know, I know broad strokes at best. So um, explain a little bit what you mean about there. Same ad, but different pictures. Why would that be helpful? So instantly, Facebook are able to actually take the group of people that you're willing to be in front of, and they're going to be able to, let's say, put this one out to a thousand, this one out to a thousand, this one out to a thousand, and this one out to a thousand. And they're going to be able to say, hey, this one converts at every two pounds spent. This one here converts at every 40 pence spent. And they're going to be able to push the budget to where it's the cheapest conversions for you. So it'll save you a ton of time. It's exactly what they want because they want to be able to test this out and see what's going to work. A traditional A-B split test is just two, two things. So you're, right. you know, you're testing one image against another or one landing page against another. But with Facebook ads, you have the ability to test multiple things at once uh, and have Facebook with all of this at their disposal to go and figure out the ones that are going to get you the best results, which is why as long as you test broadly, you know, you tend to be successful even right from the start as long as you've given facebook enough to work with and another good reason then to start with low daily budget so you can see on a a low macro level of that one's working surprisingly not the image i thought my killer image hasn't done any any business whatsoever and no one liked it but the one i (laughs) hated has been hugely successful so would you suggest that people then start campaigns with lower budgets um do do broad testing and then when say like like you were saying there's like 25 different examples there when one of those starts to see success is that where you double down and throw you know stop all the other ads completely and 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 drop all your money into it yeah so you're not really looking to end up with one audience and one ad it's not as it's not as far as that but you're looking to turn off the things that really are underperforming Uh, and the reason why we don't turn everything off is the ads kind of work together to get somebody to the goal. And what I mean by that is that if, uh, let's say your advert lands in front of me, right? And I click on it, but I don't go and opt in or I don't book the call or I don't purchase the product. Right. Facebook is going to see that I'm very interested in what it is that you do. 
but they know that I haven't done the desired outcome that you've told them at the start of the campaign you are looking for. So gotcha. what, what they'll do in that scenario is they'll put more ads in front of me than other people because they know that I'm close to the conversion. Okay. And so potentially then by having multiple ads out, even if some are not underperforming, but some aren't performing a bit as well as others, by having those, you as someone who is showing some interest may then be in a cycle showing one of those underperforming ads, but that might be exactly the the straw that is it, that breaks your purchasing back. Spot on. So if you only had the one ad, then I would be shown the same ad over and over again. It sure, would, okay. It would probably not really grab my attention again. It would so maybe even lead to me hitting the three dots at the top and reporting the ad, which doesn't, sure. doesn't end well for you. Um, whereas if you have some different images in there or different videos in there or a mix of images and videos, then something new is going to land in my newsfeed that is going to re-grab my attention and mm -hmm. help move me over the line. And then we start to get to the point where, you know, the seven, 14 points of touch that buyers have always needed all the way back to Madison Avenue in the sixties and, yeah, yeah. and before, um, but where there was a, the bus stop ad, the billboard, the radio ad, the TV ads. So by the time you sat down and said, damn, I finished, I, 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 I really fancy a Coca-Cola. <laughs> Why did I say Coca-Cola? Like, I'm just thirsty. Like actually a glass of water will do and Coca-Cola. And I guess if you're running these multiple ads and they're sitting on people in those sort of ways, you're getting to that point where as opposed to it being spammy and it's like, I've seen this a thousand times, hit those three buttons, get out of my life, right? Instead, <laughs> actually, it's almost building the trust and building the brand awareness that you're looking for. You'd be like, oh, hang on. Did I see that before? Is that the And if you are doing this A-B testing and coming up with different versions of, you know, what you're releasing, then to the brain that's going to feel also, you know, if I've seen three different, four different ads, feels like something different, feels like something new, but with the same branding, I know who this company is. Did I see this before? Did I not? Didn't see this one. Hang on, click. I'm in, I'm buying. Neil, sign me up. I like it. <laughs> okay. All sounds super easy. I go and start spending some money immediately. Um, <laughs> so the th now uh, I've got all this money and I'm about to spend it, about to have huge success. But you've mentioned Facebook an awful lot. I know a lot of people out there right now will be saying, but Facebook's not for business. Shoney, Facebook's not for business. Why would I spend my hard earned money on Facebook for my business? Are you crazy? <laughs> Well, Facebook has more users than any other social media platform at the moment, at least anyway. Uh, and especially if you target anybody that's sort of over the age of 25, it's, uh, it's an excellent place to, to be running advertising. The, on top of that, like obviously the audience is, is, and the density of the audience is a really big thing. But also Facebook ads are actually really cheap. Like if you compare it to like, Google ad costs, YouTube ad costs, Twitter ad costs for some reason. Twitter <laughs> Twitter ads are super expensive. I don't know why. And uh, 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 LinkedIn ads also massively expensive. Yeah, but, yeah. but at least Twitter ads, because it's such an old platform, has a huge amount of data. Like you yeah. can get you can get really, 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 really granular. I kind of I like it for that, and I get that's why. LinkedIn thing, I can spend an awful lot of money without realizing it on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, with LinkedIn and also with Google Ads and YouTube Ads, I kind of see where the meta is in in the higher price point anyway. Yeah, because, I suppose so. Well, not so much with LinkedIn here, but for Google and YouTube Ads, they're looking for us. Like they're looking for a solution <laughs> that we have in yeah. that moment. Like we we say that if they type into YouTube how to run a successful Facebook ad. I want to show up regardless of which video they click on. I yes, want to be please. the pre-roll ad. And yeah. I want to say, hey, are you looking to run successful Facebook ads? Look at all the people that I've helped and I want to help you next, right? So you can be super, super specific, which is why it's okay that, you know, it costs more to get in front of a thousand people. But with Facebook ads, if you have the right offer mm. and you've figured out which audiences convert at the lowest cost, the cost per acquisition can be absolutely frightening. Like it, it can be pennies to get book calls. It can be pennies to get purchases. Yeah. And that, that is just absolutely crazy and unheard of. You do not get conversions for pennies with Google ads or YouTube ads. So 
if you test broadly and you figure out what works and what doesn't, and by the way, for anybody that's like, well, I've tested quite broadly and it, it doesn't work, right? The, the key thing is go right back to the start and it all starts with your offer. Mm. You know, like mm. a lot of people want to go, right, well, Facebook ads, YouTube ads, whatever it may be, as long as I know what the structure of the campaign should be, then I'll be <laughs> successful. But if you, if you put something in front of somebody that they have no interest in, mm. you know, or it doesn't make them feel like, you know, if I don't see this ad again, it's actually going to be bad for me because, you know, I, I need to get this right now. You need That's to make that bad. offer irresistible. It needs to be. And bearing in mind that with Facebook ads, they're not looking for us in that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, YouTube ads, Google ads. Sure, the, I'm, the, I'm, I'm going and putting something in front of someone who may or may not have any interest or whatsoever. They might be predisposed, uh, pre I can't speak today. They might have a predisposition to like my product because that's why it's fallen in front of them because they're part of my audience that I've set. As you said, that audience might not be perfect in the first place, but if that product is landing it and it's not going to make them feel anything right. I love what you said there. I have to click on this because it will be bad if I don't see, keep seeing this advert. So true. Those are the yeah. things I clicked on. I just bought a massive, massive meat delivery and it's one of the best buys I've ever bought. Ask if it was this offer, right? Uh -huh. I, was, I no joke. I was about to bring this up because it's one of the best ads that I've ever seen. Uh, was it right? Was it Muscle Food? No. Yes. It wasn't. Yes. Right. Okay. No, it wasn't. Right. Well, it they was, might they was... might have copied their <laughs> offer because it's the best meat pack offer I have ever seen, and I've looked, like done. Uh, there's my cat uh, ruining the house. Um, the it it is just one of the best uh, things that I've ever seen. So it was. <laughs> Buy one meat hamper uh -huh. and get three free. Oh, right. And so on on the face <laughs> of it, like it, it it's it's everybody's per perfect offer. It doesn't matter that it's the brand's called Muscle Food and it and it originated for athletes and people interested in sport. Now it's just you know you're getting meat hampers and it's buy one get three free. It's like impossible not to click on that thing, right? And Sorry. when you go through you notice that the three hampers that you get free, if all bundled together, we'd probably have less stuff than the original hamper. But they're split up into almost categories, right? <laughs> so it's a hamper of uh, healthy ready meals, and it's yeah. a hamper of this type of meat, and it's a hamper of like fruit and veg to go along yeah. with everything else. But you still look at that page once you realize this and you go, Still a great deal, right? <laughs> well, more important as well is you know I re I rarely get sucked in to I say I rarely get sucked in. I tend to look for stuff that I want to purchase. I don't you know as you were saying beforehand. I don't tend to purchase things because they get swiped across my nose like the generation game, like cuddly toy. Oh yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> can't show my age there. Bunch of people were like generation what? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, you know, I tend to go and look for stuff. However, there's stuff I'm interested in, like it's barbecue season. I'm interested in meat right now. I've looked at stuff around things and what's it's and obviously, you know, that's fallen in front of me. This was particularly an ad because I look at a lot of like, how can I get real fine meat from butchers and stuff? And if I'm going to, if I'm gonna feed myself and my wife constantly, like how can how can I get really high quality meat and loads of it now cheaper, right? You know, I want the best best yeah. for nothing. Um, and this butcher was literally someone who came, you know, the advert. It was just beyond perfect for me because the advert was like, "Look, these are fillets, right? You know, you're getting these cheap right now because the restaurants are closed. These are going to go through oh, the roof yeah, when the cool. restaurants go." And I'm like, "Well, I need to get them." They're gonna yeah. get I'm like, babes, babes, babes. Look, they're gonna get more expensive. And she's like, uh huh. <laughs> I'm sure they are. How, um, <laughs> how much is that? Just like the thing there, though, of you were worried that you wouldn't see this ad again. Like mm -hmm. you needed to take action because I scrolled past it. I remember the actual user journey. I scrolled past it because I, I rarely get caught in this much by an ad. Um, but I scrolled past it, went absolutely past it, and was like, how many? nah and it was 180 quids worth this hamper of meat was 180 quids worth of meat for 99 pounds and i was like 99 is a brilliant number and i remember that thinking that and being like ha 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 ha, ha. that's not 100 that's 9.99 you know that's the old not a tenner thing right and i remember scrolling back up onto it seeing it and then being like god i'm about to buy this go away and then seeing the comments and then seeing this just litany of comments which were essentially the best set of reviews I've ever seen. Cause I know that an ad's only running for however long an ad's running to have four or 500 comments on it. 
a they've spent a lot but for four four or five hundred comments on this one ad and everyone being like bought this loved it so one of the one of the comments when i was like screw it i'm doing it was and you know they may have posted these themselves i don't know but one of the comments was my wife said if uh, she was on death row the chinese pork thingamajiggies would be her last meal and i was like that's it (laughs) that's it i'm not i'm not missing out on this thing but where where it's important for this whole ad spend and why there's such an ROI on ad spend and why I think it's something that people need to stop being so so afraid of is I've bought more from there since not the deal yeah. not the hamper I was you know I found they do wagyu and I was like well I don't I haven't eaten any of that like you know <laughs> I that sounds too expensive but not today thank yeah. you mal pa- mal pass butchery um so uh, but I, you know all, all from an ad i'm now part i'm now bought in i'm part of that community i'm commenting on facebook and linkedin and instagram i'm sharing it with my mom and my uncle my friends but so my my one you know the amount of money that was spent to get me on board has is becoming exponential yeah and, and it's all about that opening offer because you were probably targeted because you had never purchased before okay so like tell me more so so with facebook ads you can say i want this to go in front of this group of people but not this group of people and usually an e-commerce brand has an irresistible offer out there like the the three hampers free if you buy one hamper like the 99 pound offer uh for the fillets as well that's usually put in front of cold audiences people who haven't purchased from them before. It can be mm-hmm. warm audiences as well. So people who've engaged with their socials and things, sure. but still haven't purchased. Right. So it's usually excluding previous purchasers because that type of person like you is off their own accord without any ad spend and with probably just a few good, uh, well-positioned and regular emails going to jump back into the site and make <laughs> make your second and third and fourth purchase. Which will be nothing to do with any sort of spend because actually all the spend was, and that here's the thing I think that uh, a lot of business owners who have never done any of this beforehand, the thing which they, they, they find such a hard disconnect is the money was actually spent on making me part of the thing. Like that's, that, that was the important thing. Making the sale was also great. <laughs> yeah. Right? The, you know, the, the making the sale. They've got a specific return on advertising spend where you can say, great, you know, it cost me 10 pounds to get Jay. And then I sold 99 quid's worth of meat to him. It cost us 80 pounds for the meat. I've made nine quid. I'm ecstatic, right? Whatever. Um, whatever your metrics are, hopefully it's better than that, Mr. Butchers. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, um, but it, the purchase actually, the, 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 they purchased with that advertising spend was me as part of a community member. And that's invaluable. Growing yeah. your brand awareness and growing that because then you can start to see, you know, a real return on investment, much like a depreciating asset almost, because you spent a lot of money to bring that person on and then you didn't spend any more and they just kept purchasing, just kept purchasing. Yeah. I, I remember hearing back in the day, uh, I doubt that this is uh, the case anymore. I think it, it, it can just be as word of mouth as it really wants to be if there's anybody that isn't using it. But Amazon back in the day used to, um, well, they were the biggest spender on Google ads for something like seven years. And wow. their cost per acquisition was something like they were losing like $32 for every person that went <laughs> on and made a purchase because they were spending so much money on paid advertising and Google ads aren't, aren't super cheap. Mm. But on top of that, people were going through and buying somebody else's product and they were taking a cut of that product. So the, the margins wasn't really there for, for Amazon. But what Amazon knew was that you were going to come back about a million times in the next 15, yeah. 20, 30, 40 years. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and all they needed to do was acquire you as a customer that one time and you were mm. going to come back. And it's the same thing here that, you know, a lot of e-commerce brands and I've actually just acquired part of an, uh, an e-commerce brand uh, and we're working on their systems and their advertising at the moment and mm. sort of rejigging that. And the main thing that I've been focusing on for them over the last couple of days has been what is that front end offer? And there is nothing in the plan about how much profit can we make on this? It's, mm-hmm. it's right. So can, is it possible to do this offer? They told me what the prices were. What's mm-hmm. the margins on that? Right, it's nine pound margin yeah. if we're doing that offer. Right. Sure. So if I can get, uh, let's say, 10 to 50 
conversions from cold traffic per mm -hmm. day at nine pounds or less, then we break even on the first purchase. And as long as we give them a good experience and we give them good back end systems with emails, sure. this is going to grow exponentially. And you know, most people uh, come into like my courses and stuff, and I need to get this across to them, uh, especially if they're in e commerce brands, because they want to acquire cold, uh, cold traffic customers, people who've never of heard of them before, and they yeah. want to make a ton of money every time they do it. And it's fine, and it does happen. But for the most part, if you are profitable on that first purchase, mm. you should actually just be scaling your ad spend. And you should sure. be looking to acquire as many people as you possibly can per day at break even. Yeah. Because the back end systems are where people will not only, uh, you know, not have ad spend associated with them, but yeah. they'll also make higher price purchases. Like you, you got that offer for £99. But if you, off your own accord or by a, a well positioned email, saw an offer where it was fillets plus Wagyu plus all these different things. And it was two hundred and twenty-five pounds, but it was like six hundred pounds of meat. Well, you, you would buy have you it. seen this offer? Can I have it? Show me the <laughs> yeah, offer. Exactly. No, exactly. I'm in. <laughs> no, and I'm in Shoney. Like I'm, 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 I'm absolutely. And also, I've now it's now arrived, and it came in a box. And I like the box, you know what I mean? Like I've now had that experience because that was my thing. I saw this offer specifically, you know, this is this is from from a user's point of view. Because when I saw the offer and saw you coming on, I was like, hmm. I'd like to think that I was doing this so we had someone to talk about, but I've just been sucked in fully. But has it been a good experience? And um, now that I've had it and it arrived quickly and the email was super quick, you're going to get it on this day and it arrived on time. And my wife said that the guy was super nice at the door and like, I'm, I'm in now. I'd already kind of lined this company up out of the goodness of my own heart, five or six or seven of the same sales being like, hold on, let me see how good it is. And then sent everyone a bunch of pictures of me cooking beautiful steak and was like, yeah, yeah, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it. My mum was like, cool, I'm clearing out the freezer so I can get two. And I'm like, you're getting two? Oh, wow. Okay, cool. <laughs> right. Um, all based on me just getting brought in. But I'm, I, I'm a good, you know, I, this was very well placed for me because I am literally someone who likes to, who, who really likes this subject and knows a load of people who do as well. But surely that's the case with everything. If I'm good, if I'm, you know, when I'm buying something, I'm usually into it and have a community around me who are into it. So it's the, it's that first acquisition, which is all important. Yeah. And I, I love, I love the idea of not trying to make profit or not worrying about if you're not making profit on acquiring that first purchase. Yeah, exactly. And you are like the perfect influencer for the brand, right? Mm. So, you know, so many people are like, should I do influencer marketing? Should I not do influencer marketing? They're looking at the costs of getting Kim Kardashian to, to do a post about their product and this, that, and the other. But remember, anybody who, especially if it's in their bio, that they're like an influencer, right? Everybody's taking everything that that person says with an absolute pinch of salt, right? Yeah. But nothing is better than somebody who is a real authentic customer and has nothing but great things to say about, you know, the product. And mm. Like I, I obviously do not consider myself an influencer in any way. I don't even have a very substantial following. I think on Instagram, it's maybe closing in on like four thousand, like something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I got um, Brendan Machard's high performance planner, and I, uh, I did one post about it on my mm -hmm. stories. I did one post in my stories about it, and um, let's say like five hundred people watched the story. Sure. <laughs> Honestly, over the next like three weeks, I was just getting tagged in everybody's stories because really? they'd gone and bought it. Yeah, <laughs> like so many. It, it was. I think I. I think I actually worked it out. It was somewhere like thirty-five to forty-five or something. Wow. But, but I'm not an influencer. <laughs> no, know? no, no. But thirty-five or forty-five sales of a book, like or you know, course, whatever. Right. But that's a that's a huge community buy if you want exactly like i don't know for i don't know 40 people <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not not that still talk to me anyway um <laughs> but that but that is the thing though and i think everyone pushes so far with organic right and i love organic because you know you can turn around and be like everything we've built we've built without spending a penny which you know a lot of our success has been on but we're not necessarily selling products. We're selling services and work with people. And a lot of what we're pushing out is almost to push out word of mouth. It's been a very, very slow process. 
right? It's been a very yeah. slow process and we've had to rely on the salesperson to make some phone calls and make some things happen in that time to increase the business as opposed to it just, you know, kind of coming to us and spend an acquisition to find those new clients. But spending, again, I'm just a little, I, I'm a little, I really like the idea of not focusing on profit because what you're purchasing is so much more expensive. You're purchasing yeah. customer. I'm not purchasing a sale. Yeah. And, and and that's that's very very smart so facebook obviously owns instagram um i've seen the ads uh the the engagement seems to flip between one and the other so tell tell people out there is it worth them setting up an instagram solely for the sake of having um ads as well as a facebook page well the good thing is you don't need an instagram account to run instagram ads as nice. the, the the one thing that you do need is a facebook business page uh, if you have an Instagram business page, then the one benefit of that is that somebody can click on your name on that Instagram ad and it will mm -hmm. take them through to your profile. So they okay. can do due diligence on you. They can see some of your content and you might even get a few followers out of your campaign as a bit sure. of a bonus of, <laughs> of the overall campaign. Okay. If, uh, if you run it directly from your Facebook page and you don't hook up your Instagram page, then if somebody clicks your name, it says this is a Facebook business page. So they can't go through and do that due diligence and stuff. But if you are not, you know, an Instagram type person or a brand or whatever it may be, but you wanted to test the water with running some Instagram ads, then mm. you can do it directly from your, your Facebook business page. Okay. So for instance, uh, a business could say, okay, I want, I, you know, I want to lean into some of this paid. I love the fact that they're, it's hugely undervalued uh, on the, on the cost per, you know, spend how, whichever dynamic you call it, but you know, I spend less, I get more on Facebook. I could also then potentially be posting out onto Instagram as well and be capturing that audience to almost see if I need to get a, an Instagram page in the future. <laughs> Yeah. And well, one one other key benefit of having the Instagram page there, if you're going to be running Facebook and Instagram ads, mm. is outside of like we've spoken a lot about cold audiences. So sure. you know, targeting people based on their interest in barbecue or meat or whatever it may be. Right. Uh, however, you can also target people based on how warm they are, how they've engaged with you in the past. And some great options that you have is, of course, people who visit your website, people who have purchased right. from you before. But then there's also people who have engaged with your Facebook page and also people who have engaged with your Instagram page. Okay. And you can go more granular with this. You can say they sure. have to have uh, visited your Instagram page in the last seven days uh, and not visited your website. Like you can go as granular as you want. But yeah. if we're looking at it broadly and we just say people who have you know, engaged with your Facebook page, well, you're missing out on all the people that might have organically taken a look at you on Instagram. Yeah. And if you're a self-starting business and you're up for a bit of the hustle, then you could have an Instagram page, right? And you can have some very low cost ads out there targeting people who have engaged with your Facebook or Instagram page in the last seven days. That's a great right. audience, by the way. So Because they have seen you, they already trust you. And I'm, I'm very much one of those person, people when I see an ad and I'm like, huh, I know those guys. <laughs> yeah. that's, that, that's okay for me to receive that ad. I know that those guys. Exactly. But how often, I guess, from speaking to you, is that, that I know those guys because I looked at their website the other day and now they're targeting me for it. Now, is, exactly. is that called retargeting? Yeah, so they're retargeting ads. And the beautiful thing about them is that they're dynamic. So you don't need to go in and update them. They can be evergreen ads. You could have set them off three years ago. And as long as they're still converting, then you can just leave them running. Because if somebody engages with your Instagram page in the next five minutes, 10 yeah. minutes from now, they can see your advert. But right. after seven days, if they haven't re-engaged with you, mm -hmm. so they, they haven't been fussed by your content or they haven't been fussed by your advert or visited your website, then they'll flow out of it so that you don't, you know, get them upset. So, yeah. you know, you're, you're not spending money on somebody that isn't going to convert and is only going to be upset if they continue seeing your ad. But the people who it does work for, are going to see your ad for that seven days. It keeps costs really low, right? And it means that it's super specific who's seen it. I I like to call it the seven day stack. It's my my favorite ad set of all time. Most people won't have a favorite ad set of all time. That's okay. <laughs> uh, but my favorite ad set of all time is the seven day stack, uh, and it is people who have engaged with my Instagram in the last seven days, people who have engaged with my Facebook page in the last seven days, and people who visited my website in the last seven days. I couple those together, and then I tell Facebook run ads to these people i've done those things
<laughs> <laughs> in the last seven days <laughs> oh no i'm gonna see the ads <laughs> we'll be sat on the call and i'll be like how to get here did i pay for this oh, son of a... <laughs> now that i've now that i've opened the floodgates by clicking on that, that it, you, you can't you can't get away from this web That's you'll be it. seeing my youtube ads my google ads <laughs> you'll be seeing my linkedin ads yeah look forward to it quite frankly that's the point um now a lot of people will be full on board with everything we've said, right? No, you know, so a lot of this is going to be absolutely no knowledge. Uh, sorry, no, no new knowledge to them. But everything you've mentioned here is about is about you having like the expertise, right? And something like you were saying there, retargeting, real nice, low way of doing it. You could spend an awful lot of money to to get through to, um, you know, to the point where you're learning these lessons. Basically, you know, you could do it yourself. So. I know people think it's too expensive for, to have ads run themselves or to go through to it. I'm not asking you to start throwing out, uh, you know, hey, buy mine buy it for $9.99 because apparently I'll buy it immediately. Um, <laughs> but uh, but no, I'm not asking you to give a cost. But how do people, uh, when they're looking at someone to pay to uh, manage their ads, how do people justify the cost they're spending for someone? Is it better to find someone else to do it, them, to, to do it or to learn themselves? What What would you suggest? Well, I, I tend to think that the best thing, because we have a ton of people who've come through agencies and it hasn't worked. So okay. they're, they're like, I'm just taking this into my own hands and I want to control it and be able to use it. And the cool thing is that even when they go on and be very successful, they might actually outsource it again, but now they're able to call BS mm -hmm. on you know people that are like, I'm a Facebook ad expert, but they've actually mm -hmm. watched a YouTube video on how to set up a Facebook ad campaign. <laughs> right so wait that's two separate things oh, no. <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh, because the thing is there's so many people out there that will run facebook ad campaigns for for people and some of them you know are excellent by the way like absolutely excellent and some of them are people that have just seen an opportunity like people will pay like two grand a month for for me to run facebook ads and that's not even with the budget perfect right i'll just run facebook ads for people right yeah so that's something that there's a lot of and first of all do your due diligence on mm. case studies just say just send me over five to ten case studies that's all i need just five to ten right and easy. you know easy you should that should be easy for you because you know you've worked with all these people that'll be fine um and then the second thing is make sure that they know that the reporting that you want is yeah. money in versus money out <laughs> Okay, right. let's pick that apart a little bit. What what else could but 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 Shoni, what else could people people give me? Of course, they're going to give me money in versus money out. Well, Jay, <laughs> <laughs> right. So I actually did some third party stuff for uh, for an agency like right back in the day when I first started running ads, um, mm. and they were like, "Oh, uh, like we don't we don't offer this. Can you run ads for some clients that have been asking us to run ads?" I was like. Yeah, sure, that, that's absolutely fine. And I was like, uh, right, so when do we do reporting? Is it weekly, monthly, whatever? Mm. When I was told what to report, it was like uh, link clicks, cost per link click, impressions, reach, all of that stuff that looks really good, mm. right? And therefore, um, like we weren't reporting on sales, we weren't reporting on money in versus money out, et cetera. And I said, I would love to put the pixel on their website so I can track this stuff and also optimize the ads further. And they had no interest in it. They they were like they were like no 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 they we we just want to focus on link clicks, cost per link click, impressions, and reach. And I was like, this is really uncomfortable because I actually know that for these numbers to get better, I have mm. to unoptimize the campaign <laughs> because when you start the campaign you choose what you want facebook to go and get you and they're really good at getting that result sure. and and if get, you're killing so if you're killing it on impressions the ad is built to get impressions yeah exactly or if link clicks was the thing that i wanted to have a really good cost per link click then i would be running optimized for traffic mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so it's the lowest cost per person visiting the website sure. and to, to be honest like i i i I can't even optimize for purchases without the pixel being on the site. So it's not something that I could have avoided anyway. No. But I was really weird about it that, oh, they're really happy with the results this month. And I'm like, how? <laughs> <laughs> I don't Show know me. if I'm happy. 
yeah can you where, where, where's the where's the money in versus money out so that's it so yeah. we're employing someone to help us out with our business i, I want to ask them for every 10 pounds for every 100 pounds i spend what will i get what or, or what will i see when i'm seeing the reports show me that that pound show me what it came out as and sometimes yeah. if and, and if i'm wrong that pound may come out as 20p Right. It may come out that it's had a ton of engagement and a very small amount of that was a purchase through to it. And, you know, you're not necessarily always going to say I spend a pound, I make two pounds, as we've said for the uh, the whole show. But you should be able to see that right money in versus yeah. money out. Yeah, that that should be tracked. Uh, it, it's super, super important. And it, if it's a, if it's a brand that you know there isn't a lot of margin there because we're doing an irresistible offer to acquire cold traffic, then that that's the job of the agency to be able to say to them exactly what we've talked about here which mm -hmm. is this is about acquisition so that on the back end you can make all the profit just <laughs> in the same way that you know I, like a, a gym for example a gym sure. should be willing to break even on the first month payment that somebody's going to come in and pay because month two month three month four month five month six and so on and so forth mm is where all the profit takes place <laughs> a, uh, a a car dealership should be willing to lose money <laughs> on, on 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 the mot right yeah exactly because yeah. they might sell a new car at some point because that's my trusted that's my trusted garage right and I it's see. one of the best things we've got somebody who's got a garage inside our program also hairdressers as well both of them are the same that if somebody likes their garage and they mm. like their hairdresser, they will be with that person regularly for years to come. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Same thing with it. So in New York, um, really, really common thing here is that uh, people come and like cut your grass and, and things like that. So they do like sure. garden maintenance every couple of weeks when it's summer. But with that, I there's so many of them around here. And the weirdest thing for me is that we have never had something through the door with like an irresistible one time like offer <laughs> to come in and do something for us such as like let's say a spring cleanup or something sure uh your hedges uh you know tr trim all the hedges uh, because they got a little bit i'm really over winter exactly kind of sure. we're gonna do all of this and we're gonna trim the trees we're gonna cut the grass we're gonna put lime down we're gonna uh, Clean the gutters, sure. Yeah, we're going to do all that, and it's just going to be forty nine dollars. It's a one time <laughs> thing. There's no contracts or anything. Um, we, uh, but we've only got fifty houses that we can do it for in the next two weeks or something. Uh, let us know if you want one of those spaces. Great irresistible offer. Very low risk. You know, give them a go. And what happens afterwards? Then you follow up with them and say, "Was everything up to standard? Yeah, amazing. Right. Well, it's only going to cost you." the same price every two weeks for us to come in and maintain <laughs> this or even make it better so they would have a really easy route to a lot more sales on the back end if they were willing to sort of break even on that first one yeah. of doing an amazing experience and just you know paying the guys to come around and make it happen yeah i'm i'm, I'm laughing because i always consider myself the uh uh, you know, the epitome of a salesperson. I always see a sale coming by, but I'm thinking of everything like that. I'd buy that, I'd get that. I'd be like, yeah, that sounds like a great thing. I do need that. And then, then you know, two months later, I'd be like, man, it was so good when my gardens were all taken care of. Yeah. I should get that guy back. <laughs> I should get that gal back. I should, 100%. I should take those people back in. Um, look, Shani, we try, we try and keep these a little bit uh, under an hour just because we don't want to push uh, uh, people's brains too much. And we are on, um, you know, working time heaven for people who listen to it so uh, people should definitely find out more people should obviously follow your content there's a wealth of knowledge i've learned loads you've learned loads everybody's learned loads if people are going to find you where would they find you sir uh well this is streamed on linkedin so you can find me on linkedin uh neil shoney mac is the profile uh just go for a quick search uh same thing on facebook and same thing on instagram instagram's where i post a couple of times per day videos and just basic shares of lead generation for Facebook ads, Instagram ads, YouTube ads, <laughs> organic email marketing, so on and so forth. So if you want more leads and sales, uh, jump over there because it's all free. Couldn't have said it about myself. Sharni, thanks so much for joining us. And thank you everyone for joining the Jaily Show. Take it easy.